if you're smart about it and you want to not get too depressed about which, what is always too slow of a process, you, you pick different avenues, some of which are going to be long, long range goals um, that you hope to contribute to, um, but may, you know, again, take decades to accomplish. And then you want to have some short-term goals because you, you know you don't want you, you need to maintain the excitement personally as well as within the public and your funding institutions as well. So so hopefully you have different range goals um, that you can that you can work towards. And depending upon the magnitude of those goals, who you who you, whether you do it by yourself or whether you partner. And the philosophy of the University of Wisconsin and nearly all the collaborators I have both on on campus and off is one of tremendous collaboration and um, being task-oriented. What is the goal? What do we need to do? Not what can we do um, in, you know, in the next year or so, but what do we need to do? And then parceling that out um, to make progress in a, in a very systematic way. What we've made, I think we and other um, individuals are interested in stem cell applications to the retina have made great progress in is, is making those building blocks and studying them to make sure that they're what we think they are. Um, and making them more safe um, and understanding what they can and cannot do in a dish. What the more long-range goal is going to be is to get them to hook back up into patients who have lost those cells. So actually using them as spare parts in living tissue, in human beings. Because it's one thing to make new, new parts. It's another thing to put it into an old, perhaps broken down engine and get them to, to reconnect and restore function. And that requires not just a knowledge of the cells you're putting in, but the tissues that you're putting them into. And in many respects, that's as big a black box as stem cells were a decade ago. 